The punter, Jack Fox, handling the kickoffs. And off we go from Ford Field. This returnable from the four. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. The Tennessee offense taking the field for the first time. They'll be let out by their quarterback, the veteran from Oklahoma State. It's Mason Rudolph. When you really dive deep and study some of the best quarterbacks, not only in today's game at the moment, Mike, in the NFL, but really throughout history of the league, the best quarterbacks, they hold themselves to a standard that nobody else in the organization could ever hold them to. Anything their coach asks of them, they want to be even better than that. And that's really what makes them special. So we had a chance to talk to him this week. He says, I have to be better. I need to put my team in more positive situations. That's the type of leadership that everybody goes out and tries to seek and bring into their organization at the quarterback position. Now he just needs everyone else around him to try to keep pace. Here's second and three to go. The tight end Okonkwo is in motion. He'll drop to throw. The second down throw is incomplete. It's always a risky decision anytime a quarterback tries to force the ball, especially into those tightly contested areas. Not a lot of daylight, not a lot of room for error. In this case, it just falls simply as an incomplete. But as this game unfolds, better decisions are going to lead to better results. They'll try and run for the first down with Pollard. Fourth down, the Titans turn it over to Ryan Stonehouse to punt. Deep for the Lions, Holly Freeman. The Lions led by Jared Goff, chanting his name during the playoffs in 2023 in Detroit. Far cry from the trade from the Rams to the Lions, second in the league in passing a season ago. I don't know about you, Mike, but my biggest takeaway from our meeting with him was just how important it is that they get off to a fast start. He made it very clear. They wanted to put their opponent on their heels right from the jump. So I think early in this game, they're going to come out swinging right from their opening whistle. The drive begins at the 20. Here's first and 10. First carry now for Jameer Gibbs. And this play's going nowhere, taken down behind the line. A great way for this defense to get on the field and get started. When you can get this level of run support out of your secondary, Mike, man, what an advantage for any defense. This defensive back clearly reads run, gets off his block, and he's able to take down the back for a loss of yards. Down the field, he's got seat Brown. They're going to move the ball all the way up to the 45-yard line. These are the chunk plays they thought they could get here against this pass defense. They thought the passing game favored their offense in this matchup, and I think we can expect this to be the case the rest of the game. They'll come up here first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Goff. Open man, it's Jameson Williams. Give him 12 on that one. They are on the march. Another first down. These crossing concepts are frequently used, Mike, throughout the entire game, all across the league. And what it does is it creates a lot of natural rubs. You run out the backside of the defense and rely heavily on the yards after the catch. And it's exactly how they're able to pick up this big game. A run here with Gibbs. And he'll only get down to around the 42.
Here's a second and nine. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. Throwing on second down. Goff. That'll be caught. It's Jameer Gibbs. And he can't get away. They rally to the football on defense and bring him down for no gain. Really well done here by the defense, Mike, executing this zone defense. And they've got to be able to pattern read. You're not just going to drop back to a spot and just play like a robot. Based on what the receivers do off the line, the defenders have different rules of where their zones move to. Well, they had that one dialed in right from the jump, and they were able to stop that play really before it got started. Second time they've hooked up on this drive. This one good for 12 and a first down. When you throw on the Detroit Lions tape, Mike, I mean, of course, we all know who Amon Ross St. Brown is, but the best thing about his game is there's really nothing he doesn't do at a high level. Make difficult catches, move the chains, but he's also that big play elite receiver that everybody's looking for. Top five in catches, yards, and touchdowns a season ago. Goff gives it to Gibbs. And a pickup of three, or maybe four, linebacker Ernest Jones ends that play. Here's second and six. They'll go play action with Goff. Here's a shot toward the end zone. So, of course, you prefer to connect on that throw, but think about it like this, Mike. The more they continue to test this defense downfield, the more it's going to open up some of those shorter passes underneath. Have to get this to the 20. Here's third down. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. On play action, Goff. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. Here's the quarterback doing everything in his power to extend this play, and none of his guys could get open. You got to see someone separate, work with your quarterback, go into scramble second reaction mode, and it also gives some credit to the back end, doing a nice job plastering with their assignment, and he had no choice but to throw it away. Bates' kick is good. And the Lions are out to an early 3-0 lead. And I think this is going to end up being considered a successful drive, Mike. I think, obviously, you would have loved to see them come down and convert and score a touchdown. But at the very least, they needed to come away with three. They were able to do that and take a lead on that field goal. So 3-0 our score, and we are set for the dynamic kickoff. They're trying to pin him deep. They'll take this from the three. And he'll be brought down past the 25. Decent field position to start this drop. The visitors' offense ready to possess the football for the second time. This one has been tight so far. A field goal separating the two sides. As this drive kicks off with first and ten. Right away, they'll set up to throw. He'll be hit as he throws, and that one will wind up incomplete. Could not step into the throw that time. It'll bring up second down. He just rushed that decision just a little bit downfield. I mean, it's one thing to trust your guy to make a play in tight coverage, but I think if he was a little bit more patient in his progression, there was an easier throw out there that wouldn't make him have to throw such a tight window ball and put his receiver in a tight spot. Carlton Davis there defensively to break that one up. Well, that's two straight plays now where this secondary has won their matchup, and right now the offense needs to find some plays that just call for easy completions. Get your wide receivers in space. Allow them to run after the catch, because right now these downfield passes the defense is all over. 
He'll try and get there on the ground. And that's a great job defensively here on third down. Not only taking away all the options down the field through the air, but when the quarterback decides to turn into a runner himself, they're able to converge and make the play and keep him short of the first down. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. And John to punt for the second time in this opening quarter. The home team's offense, ready to see what they can do on their second possession. They were able to turn that opening drive into points. 3-0 our score as they start again with a first down. Here's the first carry for the Iowa State Cyclone, David Montgomery. And he's fighting to try to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will not do it. This is going to be a loss of a yard. How often do we see linebackers be so fast trying to track down the ball carrier that they end up actually overrunning the play and allowing the running back to cut back? But not this guy. Does a great job staying in phase, stretching this ball out sideways, and he brings him down for a loss. On second down, gone. The ball deflected at least a couple of times, but it'll fall to the ground. It's incomplete. You know, it's a fine line between trusting your arm and having a little bit too much faith in your arm, right? I think this is one of those situations here, Mike, where there was nowhere to go with the ball. He tries to fit that one in there anyway, and he's lucky that it just falls incomplete. From the gun, it's gone. And this drive is over before it can start. He's swallowed up to force fourth down. Defense came out in a soft zone, and I think it caught the quarterback a little off guard. He was trying to attack them downfield. By the time he was able to get through his progression to his check down, he ran out of time, and that's all the pass rush needed to get into the backfield and bring him down. So, on fourth down, the Lions send out Jack Fox to punt. Jaquan Jackson deep to return. This fielded inside the 35. And he's going to be brought down after a short return. And that's where his team will get possession of the football. Out comes the Tennessee offense. They get set to see what they can do. They'll begin with first and ten. They send Ridley in motion. Throwing, Rudolph. And is caught by the man wearing zero, Calvin Ridley. Man, what a big time play here by the corner. It feels like he knew that play was coming before the ball was even snapped. You can see he sticks his foot in the ground and bursts. He ends that play before it even has a chance to get started. Now a handoff to Pollard. And he gets this up close to the 40. Alex Anzalone in for the tackle. They come to the line needing 11 here on third down. Back to throw is Rudolph. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. So defensively, there's always the initial pass coverage plan. And then when that breaks down and the quarterback goes into scramble mode, how fast can you then move on to the second phase and what they call plaster, meaning find the nearest receiver and almost play a man-to-man. -man. And it's exactly what they did here. And there was nowhere for the ball to go. And he's forced to just throw it away. The home team's offense ready to get back at it. 
They'll look to build on their 3-0 lead as this drive starts with a first and 10. ground to start they give it to Gibbs the hole closes quickly he'll pick up about three they face second down and seven Goff with the give to Montgomery and will bring this to about the 25. Kenneth Murray, the linebacker, there on the stop. Third and five. Throwing here is Goff. <laughs> He's going to have the first down so they convert on third down with a pickup of nine be taken down after a gain of two. Second down and eight. Here's Goff. Here's a screen set up for Gibbs. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield. Every once in a while, it just comes down to you need somebody in the huddle to just make a play. And it wasn't a whole lot fancy here. The quarterback just dumps the ball down, a quick underneath completion. And then really, it's the yards after catch that did the rest. And that's what it takes. You're not always going to have the perfect play. You're not always going to dial up the perfect play against the perfect look. Sometimes players need to make plays. And... That was a good one there. And they'll move this one down inside the 40-yard line. The goal of every offense, Mike, is to find a way to establish a balance between the run and the pass. With some success here early on the ground, we'll open up things as the game unfolds for the quarterback in this passing game. First and 10. They'll run with Montgomery. And he is crushed in the backfield. Defenders firing through. Shut it down right away for a loss of yardage. This is what every defense in the league is shooting for, Mike. Negative plays. That's how you kill drives. Force teams to play from behind the sticks. Great job here. Taking them down for a loss. On the handoff, this is Gibbs. And they bring him down, but not until they get inside the 30-yard line. This offense has to be thrilled, Mike, with the success they've had here on the ground in this opening quarter. Now as the rest of the game unfolds, everything in the game plan continues to open up. On first and ten, here's Goff. Now a deep ball toward the end zone. That is going to be pulled in. He's got it. Touchdown, Lions. All week, we're going to see this play be run over and over as a highlight of the quarterback and the receiver. But, Mike, the part that people don't give enough credit to, in order to get a downfield shot, you have to have time. And what a great job by the offensive line, allowing the quarterback to be comfortable enough in the pocket. Let those deeper routes develop be on time and accurate with the ball. And that's why this play is going to be a highlight all week 
Let's give the big guys up front some credit. We are through one. It's the Lions who have the early lead. And we are back to the Motor City in a moment. So the lead is now 10-0 as this kicks away. Now return coming from the 7. And he'll work this one past the 25 to right about the 28-yard line. The visitors' offense ready to see what they can do. And nothing doing from the offense just yet. Down 10-0 as they come up with first and 10. The throw is Rudolph. That caught Tony Pollard. And he's not going to be able to get away. Very good coverage on the perimeter. It goes down as a loss of yards. Lost one on the last play. So now it's second and 11. Up the middle, here comes Pollard. And he's going to be swallowed up again. Back-to-back -back runs, back-to-back -back losses. Now it is third down. Well, as been the case this entire first half, it's been the defense that's really carried the load for this team. Some offensive struggles, but they've done more than their part coming through again with another big stop for a loss. Now Rudolph. And that is incomplete. DeAndre Hopkins was the intended target for that one. And it's going to bring up fourth down. It's one of those balls where the quarterback wishes there was a string. The second it came out of his hand, he wished he could just pull it back because from the moment it left his hand, that looked like a sure interception. And the only reason it wasn't because the defender just flat out dropped it. Uh, but he cannot get away. Great job down there to hold him to a short return. That's Amon Ra St. Brown and the rest of the Detroit offense heading out for their next possession. They've got the 10-0 advantage here early. And we'll see if they can add to it. Beginning on this drive, first and 10. They'll start this one on the ground with Gibbs. And he'll be brought down after a short pickup to the 24. The terrific interior performer Jeffrey Simmons on the stop. Patrick motioning here. Throwing Goff. And a good effort there defensively. It's knocked away and incomplete. Throughout this entire game, we've really seen this quarterback operate very efficiently. Not only being able to spread the ball to multiple playmakers, Mike, but really complete a high percentage of his passes. So can't let that last incomplete break what's been a really nice rhythm so far. From the gun, on third down, it's gone. That's into the hands of the receiver, Patrick. And he'll be taken down up past the 40-yard line. So far here early, Mike, the key for this offense has been their ability to maintain possession by converting on these third downs. It's going to be a big storyline the rest of the way. This defense has to find a way. When they force third down, they got to get off the field. Set to go now on first and 10. Here's a handoff to Gibbs. A gain of four as he's taken down. Oh, 
A second down throw for Goff. That one taken in by St. Brown. The tackle's going to be made down at the 40-yard line. This is what every offense looks to do, Mike. They want to attack the middle of the field. That's the most valuable real estate in football. Oftentimes, that's where the chunk plays come. Give it to your receiver on the move and let them do the rest. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. On first down, it's gone. He's got his tight end downfield. It's right. And the Lucas ball way down into the red zone, inside the 20-yard line. In order for this play to be successful against man coverage, Mike, two things need to happen. One, the quarterback has to anticipate the break. He has to get that ball out on time. And then the rest is the receiver creating the separation at the top. And when both are accomplished, you can see what the results are. Goff going to throw here on first and 10. That's right side and brought in by Williams. And he will get into the end zone. Jamison Williams. Touchdown, Detroit. We all make such a big deal, Mike, when we see a quarterback go through his progression and deliver a deep downfield strike for a touchdown. But sometimes, just take what's easy, the easy pitch and catch, get an underneath completion. That's exactly what the quarterback does here. Takes what the defense gives them. And when you have a playmaker like that on the outside, they can do the rest with their feet after the catch. And the end result is still a touchdown. Bates, good, with the extra point. And the Lions move further out in front. It is now 17 to nothing. Both teams ready to go once more as the kick's away. He fields it at the 8. And he'll be brought down right around the 25-yard line. The visitors' offense ready to get back at it. They trail this one 17 to nothing now. Really need to find some inspiration, some momentum on this drive as they'll begin here with first down. Looking to throw. Looking middle, and he's got Ridley. And he's going to be taken down at the 37. It's been a rough first half, but now as we approach halftime, Mike, you got to start getting some wins. And it could be something small like we just saw here. Some positive plays, build a little confidence on that sideline. So as you go into halftime, you have something to build on. Here's Rudolph. In trouble, and he's going to be taken down. In what's been a pretty one-sided affair from the opening whistle, it just seems like it continues to get worse. This defense, they know they have them on the edge, and they continue to rush the quarterback the way they are. I'm not sure what this offense can do come the second half. Work to do now as they come up on second and long. They run it straight ahead with Pollard. Has an opening. Has the 40. It's tough to completely celebrate, Mike, when you don't pick up the first down. But that's a run you will take every single time. I mean, good yardage in a lot of situations. It'll get you the first down, just not here. Here's third down and a few inches. 
Again, it's Pollard. He's got nowhere to go. The defensive front controlling the line of scrimmage there. That's going to bring up fourth down. Coming off that edge, Mike, you have to quickly determine, is this a pass or is it a run? And once he realized it was a run, he's able to shed his blocker, make the play, no gain. And we will not have a return here. This one angled out of bounds. The Lions offense and receiver Amon Ross St. Brown set for this next possession. And seemingly every time they've looked his way in the first half, it's resulted in a big play that is borne out by those eye-popping numbers. Here's first and ten. So they start this on the ground with Montgomery. And he'll manage to work this forward to the 37. Linebacker Ernest Jones ends that play. Second and seven. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. Straight ahead with Gibbs. And he'll only be able to muster a couple of yards. Kenneth Murray, the linebacker, there on the stop. Here now, third and five. Now, gone. That's going to be intercepted. That's the linebacker, Arden Key. So not a lot of yards on the return, Mike, but that's okay. The number one thing, end up with the ball in your hands. And in this case, mission accomplished, and his guys are headed off the field to celebrate. The Titans offense ready to take over once again. They'll begin with great field position, a short field, in fact, as they start with a first down. They send Ridley in motion. Rudolph. That's to the left side, caught by Ridley. And no place to go, no place to hide. He's taken down behind the line. So after the loss on first, here's second and 14. They'll look to throw. His pass caught. It's Chigokankwo. 15 yards through the air. First down for Tennessee. This may look like a simple connection, Mike, just pitch and catch, but I can promise you the amount of time these two guys have spent together on the practice field, in the meeting rooms, just getting on the same page, seeing the game through the same set of eyes, it makes what's pretty difficult seem a lot easier. So, a lot of options on the table now. It's first and five. The tight end, Okonkwo, is in motion. Now they'll set up to throw. Down inside the 10. And he's in. Chick Okonkwo. Touchdown, Titans. Mike, we used to have a saying that it was the responsibility of the receiver to run the route through the eyes of the quarterback. And I think this is a great example here. Two guys clearly on the same page. Quarterback expected his target to be in a certain place at a certain time. He's there, balls delivered accurately. He's able to pick up the rest with his legs and that's a big time connection for the touchdown. The veteran Nick Folk here for the extra point.
He knocks it through. And the Titans are back in this one. It's 17 to 7. After the touchdown, out is Folk to kick this one away. To return it, it's Dorsey. Across the 20, they'll mark him down before the 25-yard line. That's where the offense will take over. Jameer Gibbs and the Detroit offense set to take over again. Their lead is 10. They go back to work trying to add to it. It begins with first down. Montgomery to start the drop. Can he get away? No, he's taken down behind the line. Good job by the defense with a negative play. Number one rule of run blocking for the offensive line is you don't want to allow penetration. It just doesn't give your running back any angles to cut and find the hole. It's exactly how it played out here. They've got to do a better job holding the line of scrimmage and not getting pushed back. They'll stay on the ground. Again, Montgomery. And he nearly got free. But as it is, gain of six. It sets up third down. Out of the shotgun. It's gone. He'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. So the hope is your one-third down conversion from really jump-starting a possession that ultimately leads in points. But after that third down incompletion, kind of throws a wrench into those plans. Here's Jack Fox now. He's on for the second time and wouldn't mind a carbon copy of that first kick. Here comes Jackson on the return. And he'll get a few yards back here on the return before being forced out of bounds. The Titans offense ready to get back to work. The deficit is at 10, so an important drive forthcoming. Getting started with first and 10. play action he'll set up to throw and this ball batted away and incomplete I think the biggest issue and why they find themselves trailing in this game Mike has really just been the ups and downs of this passing game and sometimes he's highly accurate and efficient but at others he just misses too many easy throws the question is are they going to be able to overcome this quarterback inconsistency and pull this game out running here it's Pollard He'll get this ahead, gain of about four, and it leads to third down. He'll drop to throw. And on third down, that ball incomplete. Well, it's pretty clear the main reason why they find themselves trailing in this game, Mike, has really just been the inefficiency of this offense and primarily out of the quarterback position. I mean, to complete less than half of your pass attempts, it just makes it very hard to compete at a high level consistently in the NFL. And if they want to find themselves having any chance of getting back into this game and winning this one, he's going to have to get a lot better with the ball. Here's the Detroit offense now headed back onto the field. They'll start out, first down, and 10.
They move Laporta, sending him in motion. On the ground, this is Gibbs. And he finds a little bit of space. He'll take this forward for a gain of four. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. On second down, Goff. That's caught by Gibbs. And he's got this up close to the 35-yard line. We see this week in and week out, Mike. These running backs in today's game, they really have the skill set of a wide receiver. So if you're going to guard them one-on-one, -on -one, and you know the offense is going to use him in the passing game, you better have that guy. You better have that matchup guy that you're confident to put on him and say, okay, you're going to go out there in space and defend a receiver like this. And after plays like that, I'm not sure how much more man coverage they can afford to play. That's a nice pickup on a first down throw. It's a gain of eight. The drag route. We used to say this is day one install. Every single offense in the NFL has this sort of route, especially for the tight end position. And depending on the speed and the run after catch ability of the tight end, sometimes it can lead to some of the biggest gains. Throwing on second down. Goff. Working the sideline. That's St. Brown. A couple of first downs, and the football's out to the 48-yard line as they come up first and 10. And that one knocked away. It's incomplete. This is teach tape for man defense, Mike. I mean, he's not looking back at the quarterback at all. He is in the hip pocket of his receiver. He's staying in phase and in rhythm, and then he knows when the wide receiver's hands go up, attack the ball, and that's about as good as it gets. From the gun, it's Goff. Catch is made, that is Williams. And they'll take this down inside the 35. And now you can see they're really getting in rhythm in this two-minute drive. Now, after that last completion, Mike, they cross midfield. Now the mindset goes to, all right, we got to come away with some points. They've got a quarterback who's in complete control, and they got to see if they can finish this thing off. They'll break the huddle. Coming up now for first and ten. Goff to throw. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. Just seems like another case of predetermining where the quarterback is going to go with the ball. He had a lot of good route options on that last concept. I think if he just remains a little bit more patient, read the play out, let it unfold, will lead to some easier and better completions. And they bring him down inside the 25-yard line. The Lions call their first timeout as the clock stops with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Off to throw on first down. This one caught by Patrick. And he's brought down after a gain of six on first down. Receiver just finds himself in a really nice groove. And there's these weird times in the game, Mike, where it just seems like every ball comes your way. Every play they call, you're wide open. And you just find yourself in one of those grooves that athletes talk about. So they got to continue to ride the hot hand because right now on that field, there's no mistaking who it is. They couldn't quite connect there on that short pass, Mike, and I just think it's worth reminding everyone how different the concepts are down here in the red zone than what the rest of the game plan calls for in the normal part of the field. Important one here. Want to keep this drive moving. Got to pick up third and four. Here's Goff. 
Now a loose football. And this is taken in by the defense. The defense comes up with a play in the red zone. Those active hands get to the quarterback, knock it out, and they come up with the recovery. Mike, we see this from time to time down here when an offense is operating in the red zone. The field shrinks, coverage gets a little bit tighter, quarterbacks tend to hold the ball a little too long, and that's exactly what came back to bite him right here. Now, whistles here. Looks like one of the defenders got a head start. Now Rudolph, he's going to put it up, take a shot for Hopkins. That's going to be incomplete. They took a shot on the final play. Prayer not answered. And that is how this first half will come to an end. All right, Mike, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our halftime report. The Lions got a very strong performance out of their quarterback, Jared Goff. His two touchdown passes helped pave the way for his guys to take this lead into the intermission. All right, Coach, second half, drawing near. Glad to have you back with us here on EA Sports. First half played out a bit as we expected. We'll see if there's a surprise coming up. Both teams set to go, and the second half is underway. And he's brought down right at the 25-yard line. So Jared Goff and the Lions offense getting set for this next drive. And he has been in control of this offense. Want to run you through some of the action from earlier on. You've got the two touchdown passes, over 200 passing yards, he has been excellent all game long. From the 25, they'll go to work first and 10. Patrick motioning here. On first and ten, here's Goff. Quick throw, taken in. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. Here's a second and three forthcoming. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. A second down throw for Goff. That's a short one caught by Laporta. And they'll get him down after a gain of five, but that is enough for a first down. Just take what the defense is giving you. When you can stay ahead of the chains and just take these easy pitch and catch throws underneath, hitch routes, quick game, now it puts you in a lot more favorable down and distances to eventually attack this defense a little bit more downfield. They'll go play action with Goff. It is caught left side by St. Brown. He's got a touchdown on the books from earlier, and that catch gets him a first down. Mike, think back to our conversation during the break. We've kind of both asked ourselves, are they content with this double-digit lead? Do they come out and play conservative here in the second half? Well, it took exactly one play to get our answer. A fresh set of downs to work with. It is first down and 10. 
Now Montgomery. And that one shut down pretty quickly. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing more. What makes great linebackers stand out from the pack is their instincts and their vision. In this case, the linebacker has his keys, brings them right where the ball is going, and he's able to make a play at the point of attack and keep this to a no game. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. Goff to throw. To get this complete, it's Williams over the middle. And they'll move this one down inside the 40-yard line. You can see this connection is just starting really to pick up. They're seeing the game through the same set of eyes, and that is the job of the receiver. What is my quarterback expecting from me? Where does he want me? Be there on time, and it leads to big gains like this. Off the play fake, here's Goff. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. Really nice job there by the defense defending the middle of the field. That is the most valuable real estate on the field. They know every single offense is trying to attack the defense between the hashes. So give credit. They took away all the throwing lanes, and that ball falls incomplete. And the defense there to meet him. They'll hold him to two and bring up third down. to throw is Goff. He's got his tight end. That's Laporta. And they are in great shape. He's taken down inside the 10. What a luxury that certain teams, when they have a guy like this, I mean, not only is he the big target, but then to have that size and speed to run away from these linebackers and do so much of his damage after the catch. Ball resting on the nine. First down and goal. Now Goff. That's hauled in at the two. And he's going to be down close to the goal line. Good job defensively to make sure he did not get to the end zone. These are the worst. I, I had a couple years, Mike, where I swear I got tackled inside the one-yard line 10 times, and then you look back and you're like, man, how many touchdowns did I leave on the board because I couldn't get one more yard? Now, for him individually, not ideal, but right now they're on the doorstep of the end zone, and they got to find a way to put that ball across the goal line. Mike, these are the spots that if I was a play caller, I think I'm calling up something down the field. You know the defense is really packed in tight, anticipating a run. Now is the time, play action, and throw it over their head. They take a little bit more of a conservative approach, still get stopped for no gain, brings up third and short. No chance at all. He'll go down. Considering you only need a few inches, I understand the thought process of putting that ball in the air on third down. Let's see if you can take a shot, catch the defense in more run defense mode. But now you take that sack, put you in a fourth down where now you really have to decide how willing are you to be aggressive here to try to maintain this possession. Out comes Jake Bates to try a field goal here. This about as short as you can get. He is two for two. That kick is good. And the Lions will extend their third quarter lead. And this is what you want. I mean, you clearly have the advantage, but you want to continue to apply pressure. Can you score every time you get the ball? They're able to do that here. They tack on three and extend their lead. The kickoff team is out on the field, and we're back to it as the kick's away. From the six, here comes a return. Oh, he's got room past the 30. And a solid run back there. He'll get this out past the 30-yard line. 
Tony Pollard heading out with the rest of his Tennessee teammates for their next drop. And he's had trouble getting on track in this one. Really limited space to find an opening. The defensive front stopping him multiple times. Generally, he has not been a big factor in this game to this point. So they come to the line for first down and 10. They'll give it to Pollard to start this drive. And will bring this to about the 34-yard line. The rookie, Terion Arnold, there on the stop. Here's second and nine. Flags coming. Looks like there was movement on the right side of the O-line. They'll run once more, and it's powered again. And he works his way through an opening, up past the 35. Nice run for eight on that one. Here comes third and six. Throwing, Rudolph. Open man, left side, he's got it. And he will have the first down. The drive will continue after a pickup of eight. It's really just an extended handoff. Get the ball out wide to your running back in space and make the defense tackle him. That's really all this is. Something small turns into a nice pickup. They send Ridley in motion. Here's Rudolph. This throw right side taken in by Ridley. And they'll get about half of what they needed. It's a pickup of five and sets up second and five. In a lot of offenses, Mike, these quick passes to the wide receivers really fall under the run category. Of course, they're going to go down as a forward pass, but to a lot of offensive coordinators in the league, it's a lot easier to pick up first and second down yardage on these quicks than it is to turn around and hand it off to your running back and count on blocking everybody. Off the play pick, he'll look to throw. He'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. Timing and trust. Critical elements of this quick passing game. If your target and the quarterback are not on the same page, it winds up being an incompletion and a wasted down. They'll try again here. Second and ten. They send Ridley in motion. Rudolph looking to throw. A throw there on second down, going to be incomplete. There was no hesitation from the quarterback. From the jump, he knew where he wanted to go with that ball, but still leads to an incompletion. They're just still not quite on the same page. So after two straight incompletions, here's third and ten. Back to throw is Rudolph. Connecting with his tight end, Okonkwo. And a good job here defensively. They did not let him get away. He's well short of the first down mark. When you throw the ball short of the sticks on third down, you're relying heavily on the yards after the catch. So give credit to the defense here. Once the ball carrier had the ball, multiple guys around him, corralled him, take him down short of the sticks. Folks' kick is good. And the Titans are able to put up three and cut into the lead. And I can tell you firsthand, Mike, when you find yourself trailing in a game, 
you don't feel very good about coming away with field goals, but in this case, it does get them a little bit closer and cut into this deficit. So Nick Folk back out after the made field goal. He'll boot this one away. To return it, it's Dorsey. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. The Lions offense and Jared Goff set to go to work once more. And he has had all sorts of trouble in this one. Your quarterback has to take care of the ball, and he has not. Turning it over in the air, turning it over as a fumbler, you just cannot win football games in this league when the quarterback's given the defense the ball. And that's what he's done in this one. They'll come up here first and ten. Goff gives it to Gibbs. He'll get about two. Kenneth Murray, the linebacker, there on the stop. They'll come up on a second down and eight. Out of the shotgun, it's gone. Throwing left side, and it's taken in by Williams. They'll come up to third and three. Goff. Here's a screen set up for Gibbs. And great determination as he gets forward and picks up the first down. Well, a little unconventional play call here. You don't traditionally see the screen game used on third down at these shorter down and distances. But in this case, they catch the defense off guard, they time it up well, and the back is able to convert and pick up the first down. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. On play action, Goff. That's caught by Gibbs. They face second down and seven. On the ground, Montgomery. And he will not be able to get free, picking up only a yard. Now, it's third down. Now, gone. They'll try to set up the screen here. Give him 13 on that screen play. And a first down. The best time to call a screen is when the defense is anticipating pass. Allow that defensive front to rush the passer. Just get through the offensive line enough before you drop it to your back. Get out behind those big offensive linemen and pick up the first down. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. On play action, he'll set up to throw. He connects with St. Brown. And they're going to move this ball inside the 25-yard line. Mike, you've heard me say it a thousand times. The easiest down to throw the ball in the NFL is first down. I hate when teams wait till later in the possession to throw the ball. So early first down completion, you're on the plus side of the field. Now you're thinking strike, touchdown, field goal. But either way, I'm coming away with points. And he's going to be brought down here on what will turn out to be the final play of the third quarter. 
So these teams trade field goals in the third as we come to the end of the quarter. Back with more after the break. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. They'll work now on second and four. Throwing here is Goff. Right back to Williams. They connect again. And he will score. Jamison Williams. Touchdown, Lions. That is second touchdown of the afternoon. Greg, that's one of those scores where it's not completely over, but... It's getting to be about that time. Yeah, Mike, I just think they're entering miracle stage right now, and I just don't think there's any coming back from this deficit. Bates now for the extra point. It's up and good. And the Lions will open it up even further here in this fourth quarter. Teams ready to go once more as the kicks away. This one taken at the seven. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25 yard line. The Titans offense getting set to get back to work. The deficit is 17, so they got to start cutting into it soon. See if it starts here. First and 10. sticks and I don't mind throwing it on first down that is the best down in football to attempt to pass but if they don't protect the passer none of it's going to matter Still a little work to do now on third down. Drop play. Here comes Pollard. staying out there for this fourth down to throw is Rudolph now a deep ball here for Ridley and that is not going to work incomplete and they turn it over on downs you find yourself down big it's the fourth quarter there's really no choice but to go for this at this point but once again this defense they're up to the task, and they come through yet again with a huge stop. Stop. 
set to go now on first and ten. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. He'll go play action with Goff. And he got rid of that one quickly before the receiver even knew what was going on. That's incomplete. I think that play probably results in a completion if that protection just holds up a little bit longer. It was that initial pressure in the face of the quarterback that forced him to get rid of that ball a little bit earlier than he wanted. Disrupts that timing, ruins the play. Throwing on second down. Goff. Pressure gets there. And down he goes. So after picking up some positive yardage on first down, they end up going backwards on second. That sack now brings up third and long. And what most of the time is a very pass-happy situation makes them very one-dimensional. So, backed up after the sack, and now it's third and long. Williams in motion. On third down, they go with Montgomery. The defense is willing to just give up that run every single time. I mean, they're going to leave guys as far back as they can to protect the sticks. And in this case, flow to the ball, make an open field tackle, get off the field. Out comes Jake Bates to try a field goal here. This is going to be a 51-yard attempt. Three for three in the game, as this one is also good. And the Lions will add to their lead here in the fourth quarter. I think at this point in the game, Mike, when you have things under control, not only were they able to hold on to the ball for a while, they still were able to manage to add three points. The kickoff team is out on the field, and we're back to it as the kick's away. This taken in at the 8-yard line. He'll get this up to the 28-yard line. Nice place for the drive to start. The Titans offense ready to take over possession of the football. Things not looking good. But see if they get the turnaround going here. They'll start this drive with first down. Right away, they'll set up to throw. He's going to get it to Okonkwo. Certainly not the biggest play of the day, but a good example of picking up positive yardage, staying ahead of the chains by a well-timed ball and a well-timed route. Here's second and three to go. The tight end, Okonkwo, is in motion. Back to throw. That one complete. It's Tyler Boyd. And that's going to be a first down. A pickup of nine. The tight end, Okonkwo, is in motion. He finds DeAndre Hopkins for the catch. That's a nice pickup on a first down throw. It's a gain of eight. As a route runner, once you identify zone coverage like they were playing here, the key is find open space and stay in it. He did a nice job here because that was not a big hole. The quarterback had to put a little extra on that one, and they were able to make the completion. The tight end, Okonkwo, is in motion. He'll look Hopkins' way again. This is also complete. And he'll be hauled down at about the 35-yard line. And this is a tricky part of the game for any defense. You find yourself protecting a late lead, and 
The age-old question is, do you remain aggressive? Do you try to just keep the ball from being thrown over your head and make everything be tackled and played in front of you? That's what every defensive coordinator struggles with, so they can't get too soft here as they try to hold on to this lead here late. It'll be taken down rather swiftly after a gain of just three. The tight end, Okonkwo, is in motion. Throwing, Rudolph. And they'll work this close to a first down, maybe just a tad short. They'll empty out the backfield as they come up for third and a yard. They send Ridley in motion. They'll try and throw for it on third and one. He fighting for the goal line. He lost the football. It's out. Oh, no. This goes through the end zone. Did he lose it now before crossing the plane? It looks like they say he did. So this is the rule that always brings up a lot of debate. This winds up a touchback, a turnover, and the opponents take over at the 20-yard line. Well, a chance to get right back in it here. First down and goal. They'll run here. It's Pollard. And that big offensive line clearing space. He's in. Tony Pollard. Touchdown, Tennessee. Well, Greg, the light's still on way down at the end of the tunnel here. They are climbing back into this one with that touchdown here in the fourth quarter. And they have a tall task ahead of them, Mike, but they have a chance. I mean, we've seen stranger things happen. Hmm. They got a two-possession game here late. They're going to need a couple stops, and they're going to need a couple things to bounce their way. Folk now for the extra point. He's got it. And the Titans are able to cut into the deficit. After the touchdown, out is Folk to kick this one away. Now return, coming from the seven. And it'll be brought down past the 25. Decent field position to start this drop. The Lions offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And he has been masterful so far leading this offense keeping the mistakes to a minimum on point with his passes generally one step ahead of the defense all game long first and ten they move Laporta sending him in motion off the play fake here's Goff and that ball out of reach toward the sideline It'll be an incompletion. Pretty clear approach here, Mike. You're just trying to take advantage of the size of your tight end versus a smaller defender, and you're just saying box him out and go up for an offensive rebound and get the ball at its highest point. In this case, it falls incomplete, but if they continue to get that matchup, this quarterback's not going to shy away from giving his big tight end a shot. On second down, Goff. He'll throw it left and has his running back. He'll be a little short of that first down. Tackled at about the 37-yard line. Anytime you have a running back like this, it's more about just how many ways can you get the ball in his hand. He's had a great game today so far on the ground. Now they're starting to find ways to get him the ball through the air, and that is a handful for any defense. They'll try and run it here with Montgomery. And he's going to be brought down right on that yellow line with the official signal. He's got enough for the first down. 
I think everybody in the stadium saw that run coming, Mike, but good luck stopping it. I mean, all he really had to do was just fall forward, and it would be enough to pick up the first down. So, first and ten here now at the 38. A run here with Gibbs. And he's fighting to get free. A lot of work there for a gain of three. Second and seven. They move Laporta, sending him in motion. Once again, it's Gibbs. And he'll get close to the marker. A nice run, probably a yard short of that first down. This just shows why you can't count on just one guy to take him down. He's a powerful enough runner. You gotta have guys coming in support when that first hit is made. It takes a team effort to stop him, especially once he gets going. From the gun, on third down, it's gone. That's into the hands of the receiver, Patrick. At this point in the game, Mike, it really starts coming down to the number of possessions. So that's a huge first down conversion. Fresh set of downs. Now, the balance is stay aggressive and maintain the ball, but also start working this clock. On the handoff, this is Gibbs. And nothing on that one back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. You could just see the frustration on the running back's face as he's getting helped up off the ground, Mike. There was just nowhere to go from the moment he was handed the ball. Give credit to the defense. Great job. We'll try again. It's second and ten. Patrick motioning here. A second down throw for Goff. Who else? Another catch for his favorite target. And that'll go for a gain of seven. And it's going to set up third down. So they have these rules for the receivers, Mike. They call them green grass rules. And the idea is if you're running across the field and you're looking at the quarterback, you're going to stay on the run. If you're not looking at the quarterback, that tells him, I'm going to sit in this soft zone. I'm going to what they call punch and pivot and stop. And that tells the quarterback to put the ball on your chest. That nonverbal communication between the receiver and the quarterback, recognizing when you're open, stay open, that's the stuff that makes a lot of these offenses so difficult to defend. The most impressive thing about this drive, Mike, has really just been their efficiency. They've just continued to pick up first downs, fresh sets of downs. We just saw there, but that third down conversion, continue to possess the ball. These opportunities to come away with points continue to go up. Two minutes remain in the fourth quarter. We'll come back and finish this one off after this. Goff with the give to Montgomery. Montgomery, first down, still going. And they'll finally run him down, but not before he takes it inside the 15. They can still get a first down at the one. First and 10, they go from the 11. Here's a handoff to Gibbs. And he'll manage to get this ahead for a pickup of five. Whistles here and a timeout. Defense going to take this one with 1.51 to go. a handoff to Montgomery and he is not gonna get away might have gotten a yard but it will set up third down
A run up the middle. It's Gibbs. And he will fight his way to the end zone. Jameer Gibbs. Touchdown, Detroit. Good drive. They kept the ball. Greg, they moved it effectively down the field and finish it off on the ground for the touchdown. So often, Mike, we see teams work on a great drive to get down here close, only to settle for a field goal. But in this case, give them a lot of credit. They put a great drive together, but they're able to capitalize and finish it off with six. Now Goff leads the Lions for a two-point drop. He'll look to throw. Ah, oh, the ball's out. And they will get another chance. They cover it up after very nearly squandering a great scoring opportunity. Both teams ready to go once more as the kick's away. This one taken at the seven. And they'll be set up well as he is past the 35-yard line. Out comes the Tennessee offense. They get set to see what they can do. They'll see if they can put something together here, beginning with first and ten. Back to throw is Rudolph. Open man is Hopkins. And he's going to be taken down right at midfield. It's been tough sledding for this offense all day today, Mike, but especially here in the second half. So they are just in desperate need of a spark, just something to get their offense into a little bit of a rhythm if they want to have any chance to find themselves back into this game here late. Connecting with his tight end, Okonkwo. That's a nice pickup on a first down throw. It's a gain of eight. And this is where the versatility of the tight end position really starts coming into play. Not only do they have to line up with their hand on the ground, but they can occasionally split out in the slot. And man, they're too fast for linebackers, and a lot of times they're too big for defensive backs. Work in the middle of the field, but that is incomplete. Tony Pollard, the intended receiver, out of the backfield. Now it's going to be third down. For the most part, he's been very accurate with the ball. I mean, he's completing over 60% of his passes, but because they haven't been able to get any big explosive plays, continue to push the ball downfield, hasn't really translated on the scoreboard just yet. It's a gain of 10 yards. That's good for a Titan first down. I'd like to see them do a better job here the rest of the game, Mike, just disguising the coverage from the pre-snap look to the post-snap look. And, and what I mean is, when you have a quarterback at this level and what they see before the ball's in their hands is the exact same thing they see once they do get the ball, everything is just so much easier for them to process. Change the look, change the coverages, move your safeties, make the quarterback have to process with the ball in his hand. Well, we all know the running joke, right, Mike? If this guy could catch, he'd be playing offense. And, well, I think that's kind of a joke for the past. These defensive players are incredible these days. That's just too easy. You've got to secure that interception for your defense and get off the field. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. This is one of those situations that plays directly into the hands of the defense because think, Mike, they know this offense has to be one-dimensional. This has to be a pass. So what do they do? They bring in extra defensive backs. They clog up the back end. And at the end of the day, there's just nowhere for the offense to go with the ball. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. 
It's just so hard to be a good offense in the NFL, Mike, when you are not good on third down. Your inability to extend drives, it either puts a lot of pressure on your coaches to be aggressive on fourth down or simply punt or take a field goal. You have to maintain possession and give you more cracks to score touchdowns. Now or never, they'll throw on fourth down. This one incomplete. The defense up to the challenge there. They force the incompletion, and they'll take the ball over on down. So this offense, they think this is a prime opportunity to go for it through the air on fourth down. But this defense was having none of it. Nowhere for the quarterback to go with the ball. No easy completions. And this defense forces a huge stop on fourth down. Victory formation here as he's down to a knee. So that'll just about do it for Greg Olson and our entire team. I'm Mike Tirico. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Lions, as we say so long from downtown Detroit.